Okay, the next unit is going to be on quality management, which is going to lead us in, lead us into lean, uh, a new management philosophy. A lot of you are getting asked about that on interviews. Um, so to understand lean, we're going to take a, a section or two on quality, because lean management came out of quality management. Um, brief history on quality management. It was started by two Americans, Edward Deming and uh, Joseph Duran. Um, nobody would listen to them in the United States, so they actually went to Japan. Um, Deming was famous for a statistical process control, or SPC. Duran is famous for his quality uh, trilogy of uh, quality planning, quality control, and continuous improvement. Um, before these two started the quality revolution, let's call it, quality was viewed as a cost. Um, products were over-designed to make sure they would last, and you tested for quality. It wasn't built in, you kind of tested it out, you did rework, there was scrap. So after quality um, was designed in, it was actually proven that quality was a cost savings. Uh, you had less scrap and rework, you didn't have to over-design the product, so there was less weight, and the customers were very happy. Um, Duran led the quality revolution at Toyota. Um, just think of how, it, especially in the 60s, 70s, Toyota, Honda had such great reputation for quality cars. And that was all because of, uh, of Duran. And also the early work of Edward Deming. Another key uh, or significant improvement with quality when I'm talking about lean is Six Sigma, uh, which was developed by Motorola. Uh, Six Sigma looks to uh, uh, get rid of quality kind of along the lines of statistical process control. It's a very visual system, uh, looks to, to get quality designed into the product. All right, just to figure out how Six Sigma works, let's look at some of the definitions. A defect is any mistake. If you're talking about a service, it could be filling out pages of paper incorrectly. If you're talking about a product, it could be a, a defect in the product. So the first thing you need to measure is the defects per unit, which is simply how many defects you had and how many units you produce. Simple ratio right there. The real measure of, uh, for Six Sigma, is what they call the DPMO, the Defects Per Million Opportunities. It's a way of standardizing, so they all work off of a million, regardless if you made a hundred or a thousand. It, again, it's a way to kind of normalize so you can tell what's going on regardless of quantity. Uh, so all the D DPMO is, your defects per unit, multiplied by a million defects per million opportunities. Just a little side note, Motorola, when they were talking about a service instead of a product, called an EPMO for a service, and they called it DPMO for a product. Same thing, just slightly different terminology. You could also calculate this in Excel using this function, but typically when it's done um, uh, for quality control, there's a chart that's on Moodle uh, that will show you exactly uh, how to figure out your sigma. Let's look at a quick example to see how this all fits together. Let's pretend we're Castleton Bank. During the past month, we discovered nine errors while processing 2,000 statements. The first thing we want to do is find our EPMO. Again, EPMO is the same as DPMO, it's just for service. So we had nine eras, we had 2,000 statements. Um, so our, that's our, our defects uh, right there. Uh, and to find the EPMO, we multiply this by 1 million. All right. So we multiply that out, and it gradually comes up to 4,500. So this would 
you know, the simple calculation, the whole idea behind modern cap, uh, quality control is it, it's easy to understand. We can figure out the defects, we can normalize them by being a thousand. And we're given standard charts for figuring out at what level we're performing. I just wrote it out over here really quickly. <clears throat> uh, you can see right here at my different sigma levels, what's my DPMO, uh, which is my defective percent, defective percent yield. You know, we in our example had come up with 45, 4,500. So our bank is operating between four and five sigma. Some companies will break it up by half sigma. Um, the original and what most people use were just between these two sigmas. So your next thing would be to try and get it below five sigma, and then you try and get into the six sigma range. But right now, Castleton Bank is operating between four and five sigma. 